We appear. It's the big man. What the f- Hey guys, have you ever walked into a store and looked at something that just made you think, Whoa, I gotta buy that. Back when I was growing up, one of the only ways to tell if a game was really going to be worth it or not was by looking at the box art, or reading a review in this thing called a Magazine. And so you can imagine my excitement when I entered my local retro gaming store and found... I need this. So after doing a little research, this game is called Doshin the Giant, and it's actually a remake of a Japan exclusive launch title for the Nintendo 64 disk drive. There were only 10 games ever made for the system because the Double D was a commercial failure, but the 2002 remake was the ninth best-selling game of the year in Japan, believe it or not, and it also saw an English release, but only in Europe as the American release was cancelled for some reason. So with all that in mind, this seems like it actually might be a pretty kick-ass game, so let's check it out! Hours later. I'm very concerned. Well, anyway, before we get started, let's just take a look at the options menu. Okay, never mind. Let's just jump right into the game. I'm a witness of history. My bone and flesh perished ages ago. The legend says a big man will appear at sunrise. I keep on waiting for that dawn Splash. when the big man appears. The sun begins its climb into the sky, a morning like so many others. Does the big man appear? Has awaited for so long? He appears. It's the big man. What the f*** yeah. is that? So in this game, you play as Doshin, aka the big yellow man, aka God, and he rises from the ocean every morning and returns at night. <laughs> and there are these little villagers on a small island who worship you, and it's your job to protect them and help them build up their little civilization. Time has now come for me to tell my tale. And this blue thing is Sadoru, and he's the narrator. He gives you little hints throughout the game. If you jump, you can dent the earth with the weight of his body. Cool. Now let's see what the other buttons do, like... <laughs> what the hell is this? So it turns out, this is how you raise the ground. Wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. Wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. Wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. This is now my new favorite animation of all time. It looks like the humans want some trees in this area. Trees can be picked up and carried around. You mean like this? Am I doing it? Am I doing it? Anyway, so every time you help out the little guys, they'll praise you. And if you get enough heart icons, you'll level up and grow a little bigger. Oh, <laughs> which will allow you to pick up heavier objects. <sighs> and as far as first impressions go, the game feels super awkward to play. First off, you move painfully slowly, and while the island isn't that big, it's big enough to make traveling feel like a real chore. And the game also features tank controls, which do tend to work well with games that have fixed camera angles, but here, the game gives you full control of the camera, and it can get kind of janky in a lot of situations. And on top of that, the camera is inverted. Now, I know this sort of thing was common back in the day, but in 2023, this is really hard to adjust to again. And because of this, whenever you need to do something for the little villagers, it can be really easy to accidentally step on them and kill them, which results in them hating you and can be super annoying. But I'm getting ahead of myself. For now, let's just continue helping out and finish the day off strong. The people in this area have built a cute little town, and would you look at that, they made a small monument in my honor. Actually, I lied, this isn't a monument, it's shit. If you want to make the real monument, you have to plant a flower when the villagers ask you to, and to do that, you need to place seven trees close together, which will cause them all to die, and then regrow along with a single flower, which they will then use to make the real monument. The manual does allude to this a little bit, but again, it doesn't tell you the specifics of how to do it, so... Have fun wiggling around all day like a freaking jackass. Anyway, we've just completed the first day and I'm feeling pretty good about our progress so far. 
You need to do more! Gee, thanks. Alright. Well, I guess the only thing we can really do at this point is just try harder next time, I guess, so let's move on. Wait. That's it? What? <laughs> well, alright, that's the game. Bye, guys. So yeah, every time you complete a day in the game, it takes you back to the main menu. I can understand the developers maybe wanted to break the game into small chunks and ask the players to only do one in-game day per real life day, but this is a video game, I don't want to go back to real life. Usually you'd want to keep the player engaged as much as possible for as long as possible, not just kick his ass back to the menu and tell him to f*** Whoa! off whenever he makes progress. Like imagine if the PS1 just rebooted every time you completed a level in Crash Bandicoot. In any case, now it's time to fire up the game and start. Alright, so today, we're gonna focus on building up some of the other areas of the map. The people can't build here. This is a map of the island. Something seems to be happening in the field. Something might be buried under the house. The people seem to want you to move the obstacle. Humans have begun building a monument. Sodoro Memo provides useful information. Dude, how much shit do you want me to do? I guess the game was listening last time when I said it didn't explain enough and decided to just dump everything onto me out of spite this time. So the aim of the game is to build all 16 monuments. 16. Ugh, we're gonna be here for a while. What, you want me to lower the train? Alright, here you go, I'll just lower it like this, okay, up, too low, okay, I'll go up, up, too high, okay, back down, okay, go back up, okay, I'll go, ba I'll go back down. Why are we still here? The AI is so bad, and the whole game revolves around you cooperating with them, which makes the whole experience feel so tedious when it just doesn't work properly. And on top of that, you want to hear what the game sounds like? <laughs> this game is so irritating, and the bad controls make it so much more frustrating, and it's just... It's, it makes me want to... <laughs> Hell yeah, dude, this is awesome! So this game also gives you the ability to turn into an evil giant with claws and wings and ears. And you can do a high jump, which makes movement so much more bearable. And you can throw fireballs and kill people too. Man, this is so cool! So how do you think the game utilizes this mechanic? Do the various villages interact with each other after being built up and start a war with each other, requiring you, the resident god, to maintain the peace? Do some of the villagers not accept you as their pineapple-looking savior and try to attack you directly? Nope, none of that happens. You build the monuments, and then the game ends. What, were you expecting something else? Why? What's wrong with you? Come on. Yeah, the whole time I was playing this, I was really hoping it would lead to something more interesting and video gamey, but apart from enhanced maneuverability, the game honestly doesn't give you much of a reason to play as the demon giant. This is the game. All 10 hours of it. It all feels like a missed opportunity for something that could have been really interesting, and in the end I was left feeling disappointed. Well, I guess there's nothing else to do here, so I might as well just walk over to the edge of the world and... <laughs> so, how does it all end? Well, believe it or not, the ending is actually the most interesting and emotionally impactful part of the game. That's right, disaster strikes and the island is falling apart, and in a last ditch effort to save the humans, Doshin sacrifices himself. The entire planet becomes flooded and sinks into the ocean, killing everybody. Is this the meaning of death, or is it the start of reincarnation? The giant's body floats around in the ocean until it eventually decays and becomes the planet's last remaining island. This island and me, we are one single entity, unified forever. Jeez, I was not expecting the game to finish in such a bittersweet yet somehow artistically satisfying kind of way. It almost makes me feel bad for dunking on the poor guy so much. The game is kind of difficult for me to judge. On one hand, the game is very endearing. The main character is weird and funny looking, and overall the game has a certain level of charm to it that I really enjoyed. But the gameplay itself leaves a lot to be desired. It's a very slow burn, and 
it can get quite repetitive and tedious at times. And on top of that, dealing with the hit or miss AI and the awkward control scheme can really turn the game from a fun and relaxing, kinda chill game into a needlessly frustrating experience. Still, I did have fun with it and I think it's worth giving the game a try just for the laughs, although it is hard to recommend spending an extended amount of time with it. You can pretty much experience everything the game has to offer within the first hour or so. I will say, however, that this is still a lot better than I originally thought it would be. Usually when I pick up these weird games that I've never heard of, they're pretty terrible, but this one? This one was interesting. I'm gonna have to give this game a what the out of five. And there you have it guys, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate the feedback my last two videos have gotten, and I hope you all enjoyed this one too. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on my future videos. And if you have any other weird games you'd like me to take a look at, let me know down in the comments section, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.